Alrighty, Duelist Kingdom action. We are back. We have got Mako Tsunami, and he is going up against Bakora in a match which could be pretty interesting. Um, both decks. Mako's got a bit more harder hitting monsters, but Bakora's deck is a bit more tactical and could do a bit more damage in terms of effects, spells, and traps. So, only one way to find out who would win in Duelist Kingdom against Mako and Bakora. And here we go, we have got Mako's Perspective, who's started off with High Tide, Geosian, Boulder Tortoise, Root Water, Aqua Snake, and Polymerization. As Bakora is going first, he's going to face down defense and turn change to Mako for his first turn. He's got to remove Trap. Down goes High Tide, Geosian. And Mako straight in for an attack here. And it's... Oh, it's a Man-Eater bug. So Mako is going to lose High Tide to the And Mako is going to be defenseless. So Bakora is going to get a free shot on this turn. Draws five cards in hand. And throws down the Portrait's Secret. Along... Oh, along with Monster Reborn. Okay, so High Tide Geosian is going to make a return. Together, this is going to be 2850 that comes out of Mako's life points, and one of his own boys is attacking him here, High Tide Geosian. Alright, Mako down to 5150, and only got weak monsters to counteract with here. He can't get Boulder Tortoise to the field. There's Armored Starfish. Uh, Mako's got very little to counterplay with here. He was probably hoping to get at least a few turns in with High Tide Geosian on the field. Now Bakora draws again. And doesn't go for a flip effect with Lady or Star four star ladybug of doom why would you he's got two other four stars on the field already but it is making for another direct attack so another 2000 is going to come off mako here he's going to be down to 3150 and bakora is looking for a very quick win in this first leg all right there is enchanting mermaid which won't be enough. Mako possibly could lose this one on the next turn. So what does he go with here? He's got no choice but to try to attack and he has destroyed the four-star Ladybug of Doom. So he'll lose 450 on High Tide's attack. For 16, oh no. Bakura would have to play quite a strong monster to knock out Mako's life points from here. It's Solitude. And... Oh, just Desserts. Oh, that might actually do it. That will... It will do it. Only only just. But that Just Desserts has actually put Mako under the amount of life points he needs to survive this turn. That is great play from Bakora. And Bakora is going to win this by 50 life points. Just enough to knock out Mako, and that is a stunning win by Bakora. Absolutely flew out of that one. All right, match number two. And um, yes, there may have been a little bit of a, uh, a cut edit there. I misplaced my drink, and I really, really needed it. Old Coca-Cola always gets me through the duels. Nothing like a sugar rush. As we see, rock, paper, scissors is won by Bakora again, so he elects to go first in the second match. Okay, Chain Energy. There's also Skulldog Maron, there's also a Trap Hole, and a Magic Jammer. Again, it's a very good start for Bakora. 2000 Defense, and he also throws down Chain Energy now as well. Chain Energy is a very tricky card for both duelists. Alright, Mako has six cards in hand. There's the effect of Chain Energy as Mako plays down a Yumi. And Bakura will counteract with Magic Jammer, throwing away Souls of the Forgotten. 
Mako looking to get a 200 point buffer for his field, which has now been lost. It's 500 life points paid for nothing, really. And Mako summons the crazy fish. And... Oh, okay, but Cora, he does have the defense on the field, but he's gone straight for trap hole. Electing to get Mako's field completely empty again. There's Resurrection of Chakra. Ooh, now do you attack here if you can Cora? Oh, he's going for it, okay. Very, very risky to take a 2,000 defense out of out of its position and going for an attack, but it will cost Mako two cards of this duel. Unless he can get rid of Chain Energy, you have to think about it that way. It's two less cards that Mako can now play. I mean, 1350 isn't that tough for Mako to get over. There's a face down spell or trap. Let's hope it's a good one. And Chain Energy again. And... Oh, Mako with a defense. Okay, he doesn't have a 1350 available to get rid of Skulldog Maron. There is the gross ghost of fled dreams. And Bakura taking a massive risk again, not going for a defense, but going for this all-out all out offensive here. Oh, and it's WoW Warrior. Okay, Bakura's... Bakura's great risk is turning in for a great reward and he could absolutely obliterate and embarrass Mako. Mako is down to six cards that he can possibly use because Chain Energy is on the field. He is in deep, deep trouble. Chain Energy he goes with another face down defense. This looks like it could be a whitewash. Coming into this match, I did not think that Mako was going to have this much trouble with Bakora. Bakora has played an absolute clinic. It's White Dolphin. Mako may have even bricked and pulled a bad hand. 1300, and that reduces Mako to just three cards that he can play for the rest of this match. Unless the D spell got rid of Chain Energy, Mako would have to have one in his hand. And, oh, it's a giant red sea snake. Okay, he's, he's just drawn that. It come from the far left of his hand. And Mako now has the advantage in monster. There goes Skulldog Maron. And now, Bakora does have an 1800 defense available to him in the Gross Ghost of Fled Dreams. Oh, there's a Chakra Ritual. All right, on the defensive now for Bakora. Now what does Mako go for here? He can only play two more cards. And he's just played one of them. It's a tribute. Oh, and Terra King Salmon. Okay, it's one of Mako's... In fact, I think it is his best monster in his deck for Duelist Kingdom. He didn't play Terra King Salmon in the anime, but it was an early card. And I thought, hey, let's put it in Mako's deck just to give him that, that little bit of an extra buff. All right, there's Needleworm. And I tell you what, Mako can only play one more card. With Chain Energy on the field, he is restricted to one more card that he can play, so... Terra King Salmon might have to do this alone. Needleworm is flipped up, so Mako... Oh, he lost a Dark Hole, and he also lost a Fissure. As well, he lost some very good cards in there as well. He lost a few decent monsters too, however... There's Stone Ghost, and okay, Bakora has gone for defense. He could hold Stone Ghost and actually try and summon Chakra, but it's very risky. But I mean, Bakora could draw a Fissure of his own, he could draw a Dark Hole, he could draw a card to, to get rid of Terra King Salmon. There goes Stone Ghost, so Bakora's got to protect his life points, he needs to be able to play cards. Cora draws Ghoul with an Appetite. Oh, if he held Stone Ghost, he would have been able to summon Chakra, and it looks like that's what he's thinking about now. Oh, okay, he's gone straight to his end phase, so he's looking to hopefully draw a monster. He could have had Chakra on this turn, but understandably, he wanted to protect his life points as well. And it's a direct attack. Mako not playing any cards down. Bakora down to 3650. This will be incredible if Mako can come back from this. 
And, oh, it's Monster Reborn. Okay, so it's not a monster, but Bakora can bring back Stone Ghost. And he'll be able to get Chakra to the field, which is going to be 50 points higher than Terra King Salmon. And this could be it for Mako. Been a wild match. Chain Energy always makes a great match. Oh, it's a Magic Jammer. Oh, he's just blocked Monster Reborn. Oh, that is incredible. So that's the face down that Mako played a few turns ago, and it was well worth every one of those 500 life points. Even if Mako went for the Chakra Ritual, he would have had it blocked by Magic Jammer anyway. Tell you what, it's it's even brave of Bukora to, or sorry, Mako to flip Magic Jammer on that monster he born because there wasn't any card that that Mako could have returned to destroy Terra King Salmon, but Bukora, sorry, Mako not taking any risks, not allowing Bukora to activate Monster Reborn. And there goes Ghoul with an appetite, so Mako. Bakora, oh, he's going to have to defend. Otherwise, it's the likelihood is that Mako does have another monster. He just wants to be careful with his 550 remaining points because if he summons a monster, he's going to have 50 points left. If he loses an attack to Bakora, you'll lose. Lady of Faith is down, and now Bakora likely has Chakra completely out of the game now. There was a moment where he could have summoned it, but... Opted for defense, Lady of Faith is destroyed. But I mean, Magic Jammer was on the field, so it wouldn't have worked anyway. There's Mazera's aim, been chucked. The one who hunts souls. And Bakora himself now is running out of life points. He could have played a D spell to get rid of Chain Energy. However, it would allow Mako to play other cards without having to pay 500 life points. 1650 remaining for Bakora. And Mako not taking any chances, only going to his battle phase. The one who hunts souls, it's only a matter of time before Bakora finally runs out of monsters to draw. Oh, and there it is, remove trap. This is abs what an absolutely stunning match. Mako. With 550 points, Terra King Salmon has managed to stay on the field for the entirety of this match. Bakora, at one point, 7,500 life points, incredibly is going to lose this match. There goes Chain Energy. And Bakora dump. Mako has just summoned Bottom Dweller in, in exchange for... Is that so he could do exactly 1650 points to Bakora and leave himself with 50 to get the win? That's <laughs> that's cold. That is absolutely cold. What what an absolute gem of a match that was. Mako getting all the way down to 50 points and defeating Bakora exactly on life points. That's he didn't have to. He could have just played Terra King Salmon to win the match, and deservingly, Terra King Salmon probably deserved to be the winner of the match. But still, nothing like a bit, a bit of cold-blooded brutality. My word, what a match. All right, we will see one more match between these two as well. Who would have thought that Bakora and Mako would deliver something like that? And how could Bakora... Mako... 550 points, could not play another card. All right, Power of Kaishin. That won't do any of Mako's current monsters he can summon. Power of Kaishin is only for aquas, not fish. As down goes Wabaku, so... And Mako goes with White Dolphin. So, Power of Kaishin in hand. If Mako could draw that Crab Turtle ritual, he'd be in a good position. As we see, Bakura takes his first draw. Bakora goes with Stone Ghost. Alright, White Dolphin is attacked and sent to the graveyard. So Bakora 
wins the first skirmish battle, but Mako does have crazy fish, so he will be able to retaliate. And there is Tongyo as well. All right, crazy fish is laid on the field. And crazy fish goes in for an attack, gets rid of Stone Ghost. 8,000 plays 7,600. So advantage here, Mako. All right, what is coming up next? Bakura. Lays down Monster Reborn, okay. Bringing back Stone Ghost by the look of it. It is indeed Stone Ghost. So what's he planning here? You would have to have something in mind. Yes, he's tributed Stone Ghost and... Oh, Earl of Demise, 2000 attack. Now what does Mako do here? Does he... He does have a Wabaku face down. He's thinking about it and he goes for it. Okay, Wabaku, so Crazy Fish is safe for this turn. Earl of Demise, so at 2,000 points, the best monster on the field. And Mako draws, oh, it's Seeking Dragon. Again, it is a 2,000 attack, and he may elect to get both monsters off the field here. Bakora does have ways to power up Earl of Demise. Seeking Dragon is a Sea Serpent, so Power of Kaishin can't equip to it. Power of Kaishin can only go on Aquas. And Mako destroys both monsters, so Bakura's lost his Earl of Demise, Mako's lost Seeking Dragon. And Bakura has already used his Monster Reborn, there's the Portrait's Secret, so Mako can counteract with Tongyo on the next turn, unless he draws something else. And the Portrait's Secret delivers 1200 points of damage. Turn change back to Mako, there's Kiryushin. And down goes Tongyo. So Tongyo at 1350, this will be 150 off Bakura, he'll be down to 7450. Mako at, seven, at 6800, so we're seeing, again, it's a very even match. The first match was Whitewash, the second match was an absolute classic, and the third match is delivering as both players are going back and forth here, exchanging monsters. There's Solitude, that can't get over Tongyo. Oh, and Brain Control, okay. So Bakura had to play 800 life points to put that Brain Control down. Now Brain Control was put in as a uh, exchange for Change of Heart because Change of Heart is a banned card. So 2400 all up, done to Mako just now. He will get Tongyo back. But Bakura did do a lot of life point damage, so... And here we go, Boneheimer is overlooked for Kiryushin. So Kiryushin is at 1800 and that's going to be tough for Bakura to get over. He's going to lose 750 points here. Putting him down to 5900, Mako still at 4400, so 1500 points between the two players. But Mako with monster advantage right now, Bakura four cards in hand. Oh and he's thrown down a dark hole and has got rid of Kiryushin and plays down Nightmare Scorpion, which in itself isn't very strong. However, Mako's Boneheimer is an Aqua and can be powered up by Power of Kaishin. So Mako still does have counterplay in his hand. There is a D spell and Mako's really got no choice. He has to play Boneheimer now and equip it with the Power of Kaishin which will put it to 1150, which will at least get it over that Nightmare Scorpion. All right, another 250 done to Bakura. He's down to 5650. Mako at 3500. And Mako is going to hope that Boneheimer can stay on the field because he's got nothing else in his hand from here on. Face down, spell a trap from Bakura. And face down defense. Okay, Bakura unable to get through that 1150 of Boneheimer. And oh, Terra King Salmon. Great pull. We know how well Terra King Salmon did in the last duel. It was absolute stuff.
stunning how long Terra King Salmon stayed on the field for. Alright, Terra King Salmon in for an attack and Fiend Scorpion bites it off to the graveyard and Mako definitely in control here. He's got Terra King Salmon on the field, Bakora only now two cards in hand and it looks like maybe his face down spell or trap isn't able to help. There is another defense. Draw phase, the Furious Sea King. Only an 800 attack, but enough to chip away at some more of Bakura's life points. I, yes, I would assume that Mako would attack with Terra King's Salmon. Ooh, the Furious Sea King could have won that, but usually you would always pick your Terra King's Salmon to clear the field to get the guaranteed life point drop there for Bakura. Bakura, two cards in hand. No good with the face down card that he has. There is Magical Ghost. So that'll lose points against Terra King Salmon, but it will take another 500 off Mako. He's down to 3,000. So Bakura's going to lose at least 1,100, which will put him down to 3,750. Mako draws seven tools of the Bandit. Very useful card if Bakura does play any trap cards. And there it is, 1100 off Bakora. And with Terra King Salmon on the field, it's looking like Mako may take this one. Draw face for Bakora, two cards in hand. Anything to counter with here, Bakora. He goes with another face down defense, so trying to hold the fort. And phase, turn change back to Mako, who draws, and would you believe it, it is bottom dweller. The card that won the match in, in the last one after Terra King Salmon did all the work. As we see, Skulldog Maron is destroyed. 2,000 defense. It's a tough loss for Bakura. Usually that card would protect him. Turn change back to Bakura. He will once again draw, but maybe running out of options. Oh, he throws down Yami, but it may be all but too late. And goes with another defense. Okay, that's his entire hand that's now on. That's now eliminated. Bakura. That defense likely will not hold. Bakura may be out of options here. And we turn change. And giant red sea snake. And this one. Mako throws down D spell to get rid of the darkness, to get rid of Yami. And now throws down the giant red sea snake. And despite being a snake, isn't listed as a sea serpent, it's listed as an aqua. The one who hunts souls is destroyed and Terra King Salmon goes in for a direct attack and Bakora is down to 1350. He is gone on the next turn unless he draws a miracle. I mean a dark hole would do it. Unless Bakora's got some sort of magic draw here, he will lose on Mako's next turn by the look of it. Bakora draws one more card. What has he got for us? A face down defense. And it looks like this one has come to a conclusion. Mako has drawn a fissure. And Bakora, oh, okay. Reverse trap is what his face down card was. And Mako flips up seven tools of the bandit just for the hell of it. And, oh, main phase. <laughs> All right, I am going to assume that was a misclick. Very, very easy to do, mind you. But yes, that was probably a misclick. Bakura draws another card. And no, he just goes to the end phase. Oh, there's Yumi. Okay, Mako will end the duel with some water on the field then. Yes, I will assume 100% that last turn was a misclick. Oh, it's the Gross Ghost of Fled Dreams. Okay, if Mako had actually attacked with Giant Red Sea Snake on the last turn, that Ghost would have actually held the fort, but... Anyway, it's all over now. Mako picks up the victory in what was a very entertaining match.
between Mako and Bakora. And over in Battle City, we have got... Uh, just let me pull up my bracket. Uh, Yugi and Esperoba, start of round nine. And that in itself could be a very interesting match as well. And Jaden later on will take on Mokuba, which is why uh, Mokuba's Duelist Kingdom match will be played tomorrow. So to avoid two Mokuba duels in one day. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in and thanks for leaving all the comments as well. Again, I am trying my best to get back to them as quickly as I can. Thanks for tuning in wherever you are in the world. Stay safe. Take care. Farewell.